most forensic scientists in the United States are employed by or work directly underneath the supervision of law enforcement. And because you have these two communities together, the scientific community and this law enforcement community together, it creates a, a friction because they have very different missions. Law enforcement has a mission to identify suspects, to interview and apprehend them, and then prosecute them, get put them in jail. That's their mission, and that's an important social function. You can't, a society cannot function without that, so it's absolutely vital. Uh, the scientific community is, is essentially a, intended to be a group of uh, truth seekers. They're trying to objectively establish the facts, objectively interpret the evidence without bias or prejudice, and without any interest in the use of the final outcome. They're trying essentially to get to the truth so that that truth can then be used by either investigators or the courts to do their jobs. When you employ forensic scientists by law enforcement, the missions commingle, and there's overt pressure that is pushed down to the forensic science community from that more aggressive, more uh, muscular law enforcement group. The scientist who works in the crime lab is merely an extension of the police officer's will because they're only the only, uh, the only uh, customer that they have is the police. And so for them, they should, they should just basically work in-house and be controlled. And so that way they can control the reports, they can control the testimony. And if they start saying the wrong thing or doing the wrong thing, they can pressure them. Or they can just set them aside or give them orders and put them over here. So the, that notion, that's the generational change that has to happen, that the forensic science and law enforcement are even connected at all. They, that, the, that they were ever connected is a problem, but one that can be remedied. And I don't mean making it independent just separate from the government. I mean just making it independent from the budgets of law enforcement. That's the biggest change that needs to happen. Already we agree that this is the case. The forensic science community has already spoken on this issue, but the law enforcement community that controls the forensic science employees does not agree. And so that issue, when you talk about the reforms that are necessary, almost to a person, that issue, which has been said to be one of the biggest and most important issues of our time, that issue is ignored in all reform efforts. And that's another thing that I wanted to bring into the forefront because the vast majority, 80, what is it, 79 to 85% of all forensic fraud that's committed is committed on behalf of law enforcement by prosecution employed forensic scientists. And that is a huge number. There are a number of motives, but essentially, essentially you can start with the motive of, of noble cause. There's some people who believe that they are doing something for the good of mankind, for the good of others, for the good of the community, they have, so, they have a bad person that they need to get off the streets and therefore there is nothing that they, could, nothing that they do matters as long as they get that result. The end, the end justifies the means. And they, this, is, this notion is ingrained in many people, especially in law enforcement, that, well, sometimes you got to go around the paperwork. Sometimes you got to drop a little evidence. Sometimes you got to uh, you know, you know, you lean into a suspect a little too hard. Sometimes you got to turn the cameras off and say some things that you shouldn't be recorded saying. And that notion, that belief, pervades popular culture. And popular culture is where a lot of law enforcement and forensic scientists get their idea of what their professional identity. And it's also, it also creates an expectation on the part of the public that law enforcement and forensic scientists are doing these things to get the bad guys and that that's okay. And that's, so that those things working together create this notion that noble cause corruption is all right. The way that it was put in the recent NAS report in 2009 was that, um, those who are in the current forensic science community are too wedded to the system which is broken to fix it because they are they've got the golden handcuffs on they are manacled to this thing and they will hide and they will protect because they're not going to get promotions pay raises or grants if there's fraud or bad things going on in their lap so their motive is to conceal it i wrote this almost as a love letter to my colleagues who are in uh, government labs who are constrained because they have employment contracts which forbid them from speaking openly about the problems that they see around them every day. They can only complain up and if they complain out, they're fired, they're gone. And they have to fight for whistleblower status. So very often you have these very high, uh, very honest, very well-meaning forensic scientists who work in these labs under uh, a directorship that is either absent or is long pro-prosecution or is anti-science and does not support them at all. So they're just stuck in this employment situation that they cannot escape because they got the golden handcuffs on, they got a mortgage, they got kids, you know, they got responsibilities and they can't, they're trapped in terms of their, their employment, but they can't report. And if they do report up, they're seen as a problem, so they're not going to get promoted. If they do report out, they're going to get fired. So this, to me, is written to, to give voice to the many, many thousands of forensic scientists that I know who are suffering in employment conditions that are utterly unacceptable and that compel them to do things that, or to look the other way when they shouldn't. There are reforms that we can engage in it would actually solve some of these problems right away. Uh, the number one type of forensic fraud is resume fraud. 
happens in a, it's one third of the cases right out, right out the gate. And it's because people who employ, who employ forensic scientists, they don't check resumes. What it comes down to, if they just did resume checking, boom, one third fraud gone. Right off the top, if we just check resumes. But then it's not just that, it's getting rid of people. The second thing is the drug problem. Boom, another third of fraud, gone. If we just got rid of people with drug addictions. You know, these, so these reforms, they're realistic, they're simple, they're common sense, but it's somebody speaking it out loud who is not gonna be fired from their crime lab for saying it. And that's, so my takeaway is I hope that my, my colleagues are, when they take away something from this, I hope they take away that the, they see the science, they see the reforms, and they don't feel so alone. That's what I'm hoping.